Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. Today's video is part of a little mini-series I've created here for demystifying Microsoft's partner program. Before I get into it though, if you do want to see a lot of content around the MSP space in Microsoft, be sure to subscribe. Like I mentioned here, this is going to be a mini-series. I wanted to create this just because I feel like Microsoft's partner program can be very lucrative but it's also highly confusing and can take hours to actually demystify what exactly you should be doing in order to get rebates from Microsoft and all of your customer spend. So today's video is going to be really doing a high level of understanding what the program is, what are some of the key terms, and then we'll be actually walking through a partner center account just to see where all these things are within that environment as well. The second video I'll be doing is registering for incentives. So basically walking through all of the requirements you have to have in order to see the incentives tab, in order to be able to get paid out on a monthly basis and how you enroll in these programs. The last video will be about fiscal year 2021 incentives for CSPs and indirect resellers. So basically looking at all the percentages for the rebates if you're a part of the silver or gold membership and identifying what makes sense from a metric standpoint uh, for the fees you have to pay in order to be profitable in these particular programs. So the big thing here again, why should you care? Really at the end of the day, it just comes down to money. We all know that Microsoft margin is very slim as it is, so you want to maximize that as much as possible. And in this video series, what I'll be doing is kind of showing you if your business today with all the customers that you manage if that makes sense to enroll in some of these membership programs part of Microsoft because the rebates can be upwards of 20 percent depending on the subscriptions that you have across your customer base but it's good to understand where you're at in that to basically incentivize you to to grow your customer business in certain ways with Microsoft so that you can get more money on a monthly basis over time from the rebates they also provide marketing co-op funds, so they give you relief on events you might do to educate your customers on certain things within Microsoft, like Teams is a big one recently with remote work, and they'll actually pay for your marketing material, you know, your fees for expenses related to that, and you can submit all that through the Partner Center. The third piece there is free licensing, so you may have heard the term IURs, or internal use rights. You also are uh, potentially able to get free Azure consumption as a credit each month as well too. Free licensing though you can use internally within your own Azure Active Directory environment for your business as an MSP. So getting things like free 365 licensing, free server licensing, free software licensing instead of actually having to pay for that. So there's some really good benefits part of this, but on the right hand side here, big reasons why people don't do this that I think today or are unaware is because it's very hard to understand I think especially for the CSPs and the indirect provider program a lot of things you have to do and understand are something you could spend hours with which I've done for you and kind of want to present that information so that you can decide if this is something that you would want to do and the second piece to this is that they do change these competencies and the rebates that you might get year over year. So that makes sense in certain ways, right? They want to continually shift what they're incentivizing their partners to do in the sense of their actions. They might give better rebates on you driving adoption into Microsoft 365 Business Premium, for instance, where they might give better rebates on you driving adoption into Teams Voice. Certain things like that, you know, that'll shift year over year. So those are the couple of things that I'm hoping to demystify for you in this video series. Getting into today's video though, some of the prerequisites, I hope you have, most of you should have these already, but I'll link them below if you haven't. You do have to be enrolled in the Microsoft Partner Network and have an MPN ID. You then have to enroll as a indirect reseller in the CSP program and have signed the Microsoft Partner Agreement within Partner Center. And the last one here is you do have to have Digital Partner Record or be Digital Partner of Record, which what Deep Poor stands for. Uh, in your customer accounts, you may have heard the terms just Partner Record or Delegated Admin or Advisor. These are all terms that can be used interchangeably. You basically have your customer list within Partner Center and you have to see those within there for Microsoft to understand 
the metrics behind everything that you are managing so that they can correctly provide you benefits in that sense. So some of the key terms and foundations here that you've probably heard or you might have been confused by that we'll be covering today as well is uh, a list here. So we have competencies first and competencies you can think of just milestones that you hit within Partner Center. They're usually a com combination of uh, your internal staff gathering Microsoft certifications along with hitting certain milestones like I mentioned like getting a certain number of net new customers within the year or having a per certain number of active users across the offerings in Microsoft in a particular time frame. So just things that some of them I'll showcase to you I think are easier for MSPs to gather at the current state we're in right now versus an enterprise level um, and trying to gather competencies that you, you probably never will hit. Um, so with that, you know, those are things that you can acquire in order to be eligible for, at the end of the day, rebates is the, the similar thing I'm going to come back to here because this is all you care about. Memberships, um, so you are part of the Microsoft Partner Network and all those things I showed on this slide for free. This is all free, so don't think that you have to be paying to be part of this. Um, but whenever you think about the other membership offerings, we have Action Pack, Silver and Gold. Each one of these requires an annual fee to be part of, but they do provide some benefits um, and that leads us into the next bullet there with IURs and benefits. Action Pack provides you internal use rights as part of the benefits there and that's pretty much it. And then Silver and Gold provide you both the IURs and the percentage rebates that you would get on certain subscriptions throughout your client base every month or every quarter. It, it kind of varies and these are again why things are getting confusing because they have all these asterisks, but that's the pieces that I'll be demystifying for you. Incentives, rebates, co-op funds, um, you can almost think of these interchangeably as well too. So thinking of the um, kickbacks that you get in percentage, the actual um, separation of those percentages, and then the co-op funds that you get from submitting marketing requests in the partner center. And when you look at this, this is fiscal year 21 incentives. And on the right hand side, you notice that they have all of these things listed out like core, customer ad accelerator, global strategic, um, and then subscription software and things like that. So those are all things that I'll be demystifying in the third video so that you know exactly what these things are. But things like core modern work and security build revenue, what does that even mean? Right, that's where it gets super confusing for you to understand and really where I'm going to be coming in to, to help out. But all of these things here are something that you'll have to uniquely view within your own partner center to understand if the fees for the actual memberships make sense. And oftentimes, like I mentioned, you could actually be achieving quite a bit in the sense of rebates that you may not know about or have understood how to configure so that you actually do get paid uh, within the platform there. So the last piece there is Pi or Partner Investment Engine. This is a completely separate program that I'll cover in a different video. I just wanted to put it in here so that nobody gets confused. But this is part of the regular program here in the sense of the competencies and things like that. So again, when you hear the term Pi or if you've heard the term Pi, don't confuse it with what I'm about to show you here. So getting into it though, I did want to just pop into a demo of this within Partner Center. So you can see where all of these things are and can view them a little bit more clearly. First things first here though too, I just wanted to showcase this and I can link this below, but this is basically you know the IUR, so the licenses you get back by acquiring a certain membership, like in this case it's Action Pack, and then hitting a certain competency within the platform. The same thing here with the silver and gold plans, they show you what you get in the sense of licensing per competency that you might achieve. And you can see some of these are quite cumbersome in the sense that you, you get uh, a decent amount of licensing with these particular competencies, especially under gold obviously, but even 25 should it be enough to cover some of your internal staff at your MSP as well. So again, just some cost savings there that are part of these things within the environment and being part of Microsoft's partner program. This is just a little test uh, partner center I have set up here that is enrolled as an indirect reseller under the CSP plan. 
And in here, we're going to look at a couple of different things here. So you'll notice under CSP is where you have all of your customers. And this is where you can go to give them that link that gives you that DPOR, Delegated Partner Record Rights, um, and level of access into their environments that shows that you are basically their uh, partner record in the sense that you're the trusted advisor so that you can start accumulating uh, the competencies off of the metrics that are also coming from their tenants. Under the MPN section here, you'll notice you do have membership offers and competencies. So the competencies here I'll start with just because it makes more sense in this progression standpoint. This actually shows you your particular status right now um, in the sense of the competencies you might have in progress the civil requirement status and the gold requirement status and if you've achieved them or not and this will say not achieved because I actually haven't subscribed to the silver competency yet in this particular account so just because this says complete it means that I met something underneath it that makes me eligible but until I buy the silver one I won't actually achieve this and I won't actually be eligible for any of those rebates until I actually subscribe to the service. When you go in here though, you can see, if you click on some of these things underneath, you can see all of the things that get you that competency. In this case, I increased my customer base by four net new Office 365 within the previous 12 months. This up top here shows you the related metadata behind that. And here I can see what I need to do in order to get the gold competency for this particular competency. So this one is just called Small Mid-Market Cloud Solutions. Think again, there's just this is a milestone that you would hit. And in this case, this is all I had to do to achieve like a silver ranking for this in that particular um, account. Remember with Action Pack, there isn't exactly things that you have to do to, to meet competency level requirements in this particular case uh, for small to mid market. But in, in these comparisons here, they'll also give you the competencies underneath these high level uh, categories as well. So small mid market corresponds to having a competency for O365 service option and then Microsoft business application SMB option. And it shows you what you have to get here in the sense of these are certifications you have to have and pass and these are some of the metrics you have to have 30,000 net new revenue in the trailing 12 month period. So a lot of these things you can come in and just read to understand where you're at and understand if you've actually uh, met some of these things in this particular section. Um, so going back here, you'll notice that there's others in progress here because I notice as we've started to accumulate some of these things here in the sense of these other categories. But these aren't all of the ones that you might be able to, to do. Just register for us for those just because of the licensing it detects in these customer environments and things like that or competencies in the sense of um, certifications that our internal staff has gathered and associated to our, our MPN. Um, that make those things go into an in-progress st status. Here, this is another one, managed service a partner options. Another one that might be a little bit easier for someone like an MSP, I feel like, to achieve in the sense of the competency. So looking at something like 20,000 monthly active usage in Microsoft 365 workload. So not necessarily 20,000 active users but usage in the sense that they're tapping into Exchange or tapping into Teams or tapping into uh, OneDrive, those accounts for, that would account for three of these MAUs for one person, right? So this, this is another one that might be easier to get in the sense of the accumulation of activity in the account for you to be able to achieve the silver competency. So the rest of these things in here kind of detail out some of the the programs they have, the software assurance, the benefits when you click into this can show you, you know, what you've achieved in the sense of IURs. And they also have some technical benefits in the sense of support and some marketing benefits that you can do to place yourself in their ecosystem for other customers to discover you. And you can showcase, you know, your competencies to those customers as well to make yourself more attractive. Those aren't things that I really want to cover in here. I want to get through the basics just so you can understand like how to get paid. And then those might be things I do later on just because they're cool. But at the end of the day, I think we all you know want to focus on the actual rebates coming back through. 
So the incentives dashboard here is what I'll be covering in depth in the next video, but on a, on a very high level, you can only see this tab if you're a certain member role within the organization, which I'll get into. These enrollments here show you the list that you're eligible to enroll in for certain programs. And so this is where it also gets really confusing in my pers personal opinion, in that what you're seeing here is related to what you have today in the sense of not being part of the membership programs. So you're just eligible to enroll in these things for your incentives. And these programs are actually really meant, in, in my opinion, for more of the enterprise level space. And if you're doing not much Azure today, this, this doesn't make a lot of sense for you too. I've gone through all of these and read all of them. And it's got you know your extra small customer workload looking at, at a minimum of 150 users. And so when you think about SMB and being 25 user companies, roughly, um, this isn't gonna meet a lot of your standards. Whereas if you bought silver or gold membership, you'd start to see all these other programs come through where you actually could be very eligible to get the rebates. And that's kind of what I'll be covering in the next two videos as well. But those things, before you buy, you need to understand where you where you stand technically, you know, in the sense of the cost of the memberships making sense. Because if you remember, silver is a uh, is about sixteen hundred, and then gold, if we go back to our slide deck here, is about forty seven hundred. So for you to be able to spend those that money, you want to make sure that it makes sense on your return. And that's just basics of, of wanting to do this, but you don't actually see these programs until you do so. So those are the things that I'm going to be kind of uncovering for you again in the next couple of videos. But these are the locations in which you find these things to actually enroll. With the incentives, you also have to update your payment and tax profile. So they have to have a bank account and they have to have your tax profile up to date in order for you to be actually getting paid on those incentives. So that's another big piece that people often miss. And they technically have accumulated tons of incentives, but they actually haven't gone in to get those monthly payments yet because they they haven't done these, these steps yet. And this is why it's in an action required state here. So that's the high level I wanted to provide today about you know what are the key terms and why this makes sense and is, is this important to you? Um, next video, like I mentioned, I'll be walking through actually how you go about um, making yourself eligible for the incentives and demystifying that a little bit and going some of the, the asterisks that I think are important. In the third video, I'll be covering fiscal year 21 so that you can see, you know, what, what, what is your break even? Like how much revenue do you need to be doing in order to get paid? So stay tuned for those videos. But if you do have any questions or comments on what I covered today, feel free to leave those below. And otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, feel free to subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.